I always say this, people only show you what they want you to see. And you cannot compare your relationship your whole life with a 15 second reel or TikTok video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I have been on the channel. I promise to be more consistent this year, but I'm also trying to listen to you all, be very sure of what kind of content you guys like, and give you the best value that I can offer. So I took a little break to work on certain things in as much as I want to be talking about self-development and business related topics. I also want to make sure that I am practicing what I preach. So that means I'm also implementing every strategy I've been talking about on this channel. So I'm offering you guys free value because I'm just so happy to be in this space talking with you guys. So we're going on this journey together to the top. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share because it's free and you'll be supporting me. So I'm currently filming this video on the 1st of February and I'm not sure when I'll release it, but it really doesn't matter because basically around this time of the month, if you're an overthinker like me, you may start to look back at how last month went or how the previous year went. And that's why today I'm going to be talking about comparison. A very common attribute of comparison is that it robs you and it drains you of your joy. There is absolutely no positive, no good that is associated with that word. You know, let's be honest, it's really hard to be on social media and not compare yourself to others. Your body isn't good enough, your wardrobe isn't good enough, you're not trendy enough, and you may not feel like you are good enough. And yes, I am talking to myself too. I'm totally fascinated and intrigued by how these beautiful, successful influencers live their lives. Sometimes, if I'm not careful, I can end up spending hours a week scrolling through the lives of these people and I don't even know who they are and it leaves me feeling not so great about myself. So a couple of years ago I made a goal to stop comparing myself to others and let me tell you it has not been easy. With the 24-7 access to the parts of everyone's lives right now on our phone it's easy to fall into the thick dark web of comparison. And to make it easier to understand I'm going to share a little scenario so stay with me. So a young lady starts a business she's passionate about. She gets her business plan, capital, store, and everything she wants in her business. Then one day, she's scrolling through social media and stumbles on this stunning young diva who is running three businesses, slays for days, and is happily married. All of a sudden, she starts to compare her journey with that of the stranger she just met online. As she continues to dwell on this other person's life, everything that she has worked for and achieved starts to feel like crap and she decides it's no longer worth it. And she now wants to do this business as this other lady is doing. And when it doesn't work out, she starts to feel miserable with her entire life. And that is because once you start comparing yourself to others, you will always lose. We need to start understanding that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. I always say this, people only show you what they want you to see. You can never appreciate what you have when you constantly compare with what others have. And you cannot compare your relationship your whole life with a 15 second reel or TikTok video. Stephen Furtick said you will constantly struggle with insecurity when you compare your behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Behind every overnight success is a story of determination, hard work, and just the moment of opportunity. Comparisons will steal your joy, your money, your sanity. And if we don't stop comparing ourselves with others, we only would constantly spend money and mental energy just trying to keep up. And we need to break that comparison cycle because it's a game that will never win. Once you start to compare yourself, you not only begin to destroy your self-esteem, but you also corrupt your mind. And your mind is your most powerful tool to overcome, to be successful, to be happy and content. There is a reason why I like to use certain terms on this channel, like you constantly hear me saying things like journey, process, and that's because the results we get are affected by a lot of factors. Take for instance, I go on a road trip from one country to another country with my best friend, but my best friend uses an airline and flies to that country. She would definitely get there before me. I can decide to sulk and feel bad throughout my road trip or make the best experience and enjoy the views throughout the journey. It's just like comparing the sun and the moon. They both shine when it's their time. So why compare? 
Many times when someone doesn't feel good enough, when you hear terms like, I don't feel good enough, it's because you're actively comparing yourself to someone or setting someone as the standard of what you see as good enough. And let's not go too far thinking that this comparison thing can only happen with people you don't know, like people on social media. You could be comparing yourself with a close friend who has always had stuff going on for them, or maybe your sibling that was always that favorite child, or that co-worker that is always perfect at work, or even your significant other. Whoever it is, that may just be the reason why you don't feel enough. To be honest, I think as women, the pressure is often higher and more visible because we're very emotional beings and more often than not, we work based off our emotions and not logical thinking. Having worked in the beauty industry for so long, I know how insecure we as ladies, you know, we ladies can get about our appearance and the lengths that we take to live up to that standard. Like it's everywhere, social gatherings, religious gatherings, family gatherings, it's almost like a daily competition that is so unnecessary but has unfortunately become the norm social media isn't really helping matters because everybody wants to be an influencer right now or simply just show how perfect their life is and as long as you have the right frame of mind that won't affect you you actually should be happy with people who are happy honestly and sympathize with people who are going through tough times because they're actually people who are going through hard times but if you find yourself constantly hating on people for no justifiable reason or envying someone else's life it may be a good time to take a break and re-evaluate your actions Anytime I find myself in that kind of situation, I quickly remind myself that nobody is perfect. We know we're all going through something at some time and that other person that you're envying might be fighting battles that you don't even know about. Comparing yourself with others is such a toxic lifestyle that ends up with you losing who you truly are. Truth is, there will always be someone richer, more beautiful, more talented, younger than I am or than you are. And it's okay. We shouldn't be comparing our weaknesses to someone else's strengths or even vice versa. You need to get into that positive space where you can compliment, congratulate, and truly be happy for other people. If you're not, then you just might be comparing yourself to that person. You have been given everything that pertained to life and godliness. Simply put, you set your own rules. You're the benchmark for excellence and no one in the entire world can do a better job at being you than you. You know, moving on, let's just choose to stay on our own lane. Comparison is a killer of creativity and joy. If you continuously compete with others, you become bitter. If you continuously compete with yourself, you become better. So if you're ready to start this journey, cause you know, it's a journey. If you're ready to start the journey of not comparing yourself to anyone and you want to focus on yourself, I want to show you how, cause I know it's hard. This is something I'm still working on myself. However, I can share with you some specific steps I have taken and principles I have applied to my own life that has helped me take my eyes off other people and put them back into creating the life that I love. Number one, practice gratitude. Let me tell you, this habit changed everything for me. Yesterday when I was journaling, I did my gratitude section and I wrote out three things that I should be grateful for right there and then. I wrote my family, my health, and the overwhelming love of God, of course. <laughs> Those were the first three things that came into my mind. I don't know how it all escalated and I just started bawling my eyes out like I was crying. I just began to see how far I had gotten from where I used to be to where I am now. The little miracles, the little blessings, the ones that we actually take for granted. What started as a simple gratitude note can grow to encompass every kind of joy, both big and small, and it begins to flood your life, become more grateful. So when you wake up, write a gratitude list each morning, and you can always revisit this list whenever you need a reminder of God's love and blessings in your life. Number two, be content. Gratitude leads to contentment, which allows you to be in a state of constant joy and satisfaction no matter your circumstances. You know, you'll become happy with who you are about your life and you're no longer worried about what other people are doing. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have goals for the future or you aren't working towards being a better person tomorrow. And it definitely doesn't mean that you're stagnant or that you're choosing to just sit around and not do anything new with your life or anything exciting or challenging. It just means that you can develop peace and you begin to live a sincere life, have fun, have enjoyment with who you are today without basing your happiness on what you hope to achieve tomorrow. 
So number three, don't compare your life to everyone else's highlight reel. I mentioned that earlier. You want to know the truth. Social media doesn't actually reflect reality. I know you already know this, but have you really thought about it? It's usually not the complete picture of someone's life. It's just the highlight reel, the amazing moment. We're spending all this money, all this emotional energy just to keep up with the life of others and the life that we think everyone, every other person is living and that we are missing out on. And that's not only ruining our mental health, it's also ruining our financial stability as well. Once you take your focus off them and put it back in your own life, you can start to turn things around for you without focusing on your life and your money. Number four, focus on your strengths. You can be humble and still recognize your strengths, your talents, your accomplishments. Try writing out these three things or write out three things that you really like about yourself. Identify your strengths. Don't just write good people's skills or make them look boring, right? Make them personal. You know, I am proactive. I like accomplishing things. I'm always looking for ways to move ahead and take action like dig deep number five celebrate other people constantly comparing ourselves with others can lead to not cheering other people up who are also working hard to get somewhere and it makes it hard to celebrate with the ones who have accomplished something so here's my challenge to you when a friend tells you about her new job be happy for her if someone buys a new house take part in their joy. If someone shares some great news with you, even if it's something you really want, keep the focus on them instead of turning it back on yourself. Find big and small ways to celebrate other people's accomplishment. Um, the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice. Don't feel like you're losing just because someone else is winning. It doesn't work that way. Their success has nothing to do with you. So celebrate their success sincerely while you keep working towards your own success. Number six, learn to compete with yourself instead of others. So instead of focusing on where you are compared to others, focus on your own goals. Where are you compared to where you were this time last year? about five years ago. One of the reasons I journal is because it does wonderful things for my sanity. It gives me clarity and perspective about how God has blessed me. Plus, it's just a lot of fun to look back through the old pages of your journal and see how far you've grown. It's actually very funny. In the past year, you will see that you've learned, you've stretched, you've improved, you've accomplished, you've created. Think about how much you have done in this lifetime. And if you're like me and you've kept journals, Go back through them. If you haven't, there's no better time than to start journaling today. I'm telling you, it would change your life. Number seven, have boundaries with how much time you spend on social media. As we've been talking about comparison through social media, I want you to know that it has a massive effect on our mental well-being. Here are some boundaries that you can put in place to protect yourself. Unfollow any accounts that tend to make you feel bad about yourself. You're not a bad person. You're doing yourself a favor. Set a timer and allow yourself to scroll for 30 minutes. Sis, when time is up, leave social media. Turn off your phone when you're having dinner with family and friends. Try and be fully present and just make everyone happier. When you feel the need to go to social media, ask yourself why. Are you bored? Are you looking for affirmation? What, can, what else can you do to feel better about yourself? And if that doesn't work, maybe it's just time to try number eight, which is take a social media fast. So I went on social media. I went on a social media fast last year and I have to tell you, it was amazing. And I made so much money because I think I was focusing more on my business. So here's my biggest challenge for you. I know it might be hard, but if it's hard, if you're so addicted, leave social media spend that time and energy focusing on how much you truly have look at your family your friends your relationships your home your job and all the things that make your life truly matter find things out about your own life that someone else could actually be jealous of remember if we're actually looking at each other that means there are plenty of people that are comparing themselves to what you already have figure out what those blessings are and rejoice and just be happy in all you have and just in case you feel this video isn't for you or you're asking yourself, me, compare. How can I compare? I can't be guilty of this. Okay, so here are some questions to help you figure out if you've actually fallen into this deep ditch or if it's a problem for you. Number one, have you ever made a pulse, like an impulse purchase on Instagram? Do you have the fear of missing out or even anxiety after spending time on social media? 
when something good happens to someone, it doesn't have to be someone else in your life, it's just someone, is your natural reaction to be annoyed or envious? Have you ever deleted something on social media because you didn't get the response you wanted? Hmm. <laughs> Do you check who has viewed your Instagram story or liked your Facebook post several times a day like you're always checking how many likes, how many comments? If you've answered yes to a bunch of these questions, no shame. I'm also prone to falling for this comparison trap, you know, just as anyone. I'm guilty of worrying about what people think about me too. But you and I were made for more than that. We're made for more than stressing and spending all our time feeling like we're failing. I want us to live life on our own terms. So don't compare yourself to others anymore. Focus on the quality of your life, not the quantity of your likes. Um, I'm going to say another scripture because, you know, God said, I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name because you are mine. Comparison can be a struggle just for anyone, but don't, we don't belong to other people. We don't belong to these people who like our pictures. God loves you. I love you. You love yourself. So your trials, your success, everything can, it's just your life. And it can also be a blessing and be, make up an amazing life that you already like. So what are the struggles you have had as you know, with comparison, what struggles have you had? Let me know in the comment section. This has turned into such an emotional journey and I'm so grateful I shared this. I hope you found value. I hope this kind of content is something you like. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share this video with someone who you think might find it helpful. And um, thank you so much if you've watched up till now and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.